Bill Bowers opened TAPS. TAPS was uh, the Adventure Palace and Stadium. And TAPS uh, was a really fun field to play at growing up because it was um, approximately a uh, 21,000 square foot warehouse. Um, rental guns was all PGPs and it was rental guns only. So you want to talk about a level playing field. It, it could not get any, any more uh, any more equal than that. Um, the dominant feature was they had a giant two-story castle built inside the field and so it was it basically it was uh, octagons at each end and then kind of came like this to meet in the middle. Octagons then met in the middle and the flags were they they utilized two of the actual girders in the building and the flag was on a pulley so you could pull the flag from either the top or the bottom and uh, if you were up top, it was kind of aisle ways, about waist high, and the sides had crenellations like the top of a castle, so you know you could take cover from being shot up that way. Then uh, there was two courtyards, open courtyards, in the middle of the, the castle. So there were doorways and, and little windows so you could shoot down into the castle from here and there. But if you tried to run for the flag room inside the castle, uh, it was an octagon with an entrance this way, then a smaller octagon inside with the entrance on this side, and then a smaller one with the entrance on here. So, so you, like a maze, you so yeah, so it was almost like, you know, you're expecting to find some cheese at the end when you finally got to the, the flag. Um, and depending on where you were in there, sometimes they would turn them on at random. They would have strobe lights inside the hallways. So uh, sometimes you would then come around a corner, there might be two guys 10 feet away in a strobe light. So it was, it was pretty nuts. That TAPS, uh, everybody wore the UVEX goggles, they had the Woodstock face mask, and then you wore a, uh, like a Little League baseball helmet, you know, the ones with the little ears come down, little, little visor. Yeah, the, wall, the walls inside uh, TAPS were white, so you can imagine it looked like a slaughterhouse uh, from shooting red paint all over the place. Uh, TAPS was, uh, it was bare concrete floor, so it got, they would try to do their best to put cat litter down or whatnot, but it was, uh, it did get really slick on the floors and especially uh, at the castle, they had uh, uh, a ramp on each side at each end, so four ramps total. And they put some wooden slats in there to, to kind of give you some tread, some traction going up them. But uh, it was pretty common for uh, somebody, a uh, whole team would be running up there and one, the guy in the front would slip and and dominoes. Every, well, usually that person actually just got ran over as everybody would uh, continue running past. So, um, yeah, so it was, you know, so in many ways when I stop and think about it, um, it was a pretty gnarly way to play paintball on, on, on exposed concrete um, on a slick floor. But then again, you know, there's a lot of crazy things we did yeah. back in the day that people wouldn't, you know, we, we wouldn't even dream of doing now. Uh, did they chrono there? No. They're, they did not chrono. Whatever so your PGP was shooting at, you were whatever, whatever your stock PGP was shooting at is, is what it did. So, of course, uh, it could get hot in Santa Clara. So, when it, if you were there playing when it was 95 degrees, you could definitely feel the, uh, the, the change in the, the impact. Um, and the paint at the time was, uh, was RP Shear. Um, they usually shot red paint, red or yellow. But it was the RP Shear. Um, that was back when you bought RP Shear in uh, 2,500 round cases. What year did you stop playing there? Uh, well, I moved, my family moved uh, from California to Oregon in 1988. And I continued to come down there um, to work in the summers until uh, 1992. And so I played, I, played in, I played through there in 1992 and then I stopped coming down to California on a regular basis.